Hi there, welcome to this build of a 65 inch wingspan Great Plains Trainer 60. Now we're building this plane from a great set of plans which you can download off the Outer Zone website and if you have a look in the description below this video there will be a link to the plans and also to a bit of build information. Now in the last video we got the wings which we've got more or less completed now uh, just a few little things to do we got the wings fitted to the fuselage now the fuselage is getting there but there's still quite a bit to do but we're going to move away from working specifically on the wings and fuselage in this video and we're going to be working on some of the bits that we need to do before we pull this whole plane together now in an earlier video we built the tailplane which is a made up hollow structure and we did the elevators well in this video I'm going to be joining the elevators together so they work in unison from a single control horn and I'm going to be joining them with some wire so we'll, we'll do that I'm also going to be hinging them and I'm going to be using these robot hinges so we'll take a look at that when I say I'm going to be hinging them I'm going to be preparing it so I'm going to be marking it out I'm going to drill the holes but I won't be gluing them in place until I've actually done all of the covering because if I do them before it's just going to make it difficult so the holes will be there ready to go once it's covered so elevator I'm also going to be profiling this tail plane which is essentially is just a very simple full nose now the teleplane and rudder created, built in a, a, an earlier video I'm going to be profiling those and again doing the hinges or at least you know putting the hinge holes in ready to, to hinge with regards to the wings one of the final things we need to do now is to make the ailerons really simple they're not even taper profiled I think if I look at the plans yeah they've just got a a ball nose on them essentially so we'll be doing those and I've selected some nice quarter inch really straight timber because we want to get those ailerons nice and straight and the other thing we need to do on the wings is to create the wing tips now on the plan which you may or may not be able to see they're talking about using 50 mil triangular stock well I haven't got any so I've taken a sheet of balsa and I've cut up some pieces to laminate and I've made myself some uh, rather stepped at the moment triangular stock. So we're going to be creating our own triangular stock and hence wing tips. And I think that is probably the first thing I'm going to to do on this. So what I'll do is I'll move the camera around we'll have a look at what I've done so far and um, and how we're going to get that triangular stock and the wingtips built and shaped. Right well to make this triangular stock by the way if you've got 50mm triangular stock then yes far better to use that but I hadn't so to, to make that I've just cut up some 3 8 balsa, 10 or 9.5mm and balsa to, uh, to laminate like this, step down and I, I've done it step like that to try and minimise the amount of, of balsa I use and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue that together with alphatic resin and I will clamp it but it's not enough just to clamp it like that because it kind of opens up a little bit along these edges so I used some of these engine beach engine bearers I've got to clamp it and you can see in this picture here how I how I did that and I just left it overnight I've got that now as roughly a triangular piece and it does just about give me the uh, the size that I need so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my plane and I'm going to plane this essentially into a piece of 50 mil triangular stock and I will probably finish off by putting it on the block and uh, on the sandpaper on the bench and, uh, and getting that shape just right.
Well, if you're doing this indoors, definitely need to wear a dust mask. Unfortunately, it's blowing a gale outside and very wet, so I don't have another option. But anyway, I've got my triangular stock now, which is about the right size. To be honest, it's a it's just the right size. I may eventually have to stick a little bit of balsa on the top just to get it right, but I, th I think it will be okay. I think we, if you line it up, you just, it's, yeah, it is, it's just right. It'll be okay, I think. If not, it's easy just to add a bit of 116 or 18 on the top. But I think, like I say, I think it'll be fine. These I did make very slightly bigger, so I'll have a little bit more to play with. But before I start sticking it on the wing, I'm going to actually make this one. I've still got it to glue. I'm going to glue it up, plane it to size the same as this. So I start with two pieces the same size. So hopefully we end up with two wing tips the same size. And um, if you can, if you can buy 50 mil triangular stock, it will save you quite a bit of work. But to be honest, I don't know. I suppose it'll take me 10 minutes to do that. Now anyway, I'll get on and glue that up now, and then get that one profiled as well. Now, it occurred to me, I've been thinking about what I said about if you can get triangular stock, it's probably a better option. But to be honest, I'm going to retract that because when I selected the wood for the, to, to laminate these, I used really, really light balsa. So the wingtips are lovely and light and there's very little weight to that and there's still quite a lot of timber to come off it. I've sanded that down so it's nice and triangular to the size I want and I've drawn on the end side elevation if you like of the wing, the end of the wing rib. I've had to add a little bit on where the cap strips still need to go. Now that now can be chamfered off to form that shape. On the top edge, I took the uh, profile from the uh, end of the wing rib and I pinned that on top of the, uh, the triangular stock and you can see hopefully the outline there. So now I've got all the information I need to create this wing tip. Starts off triangular, I've got the plan view of the, the uh, wing tip and I've got the side elevation. So now I'm going to cut off all of the balsa that is cross-hatched that I don't need. And then at that point we can attach it to the end of the wing and we can sand it to profile. But I'm not going to do anything now until I get this other triangular stock done and I will make sure they're the same size and then I'll get the tips done. So. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, hinges, I think. Am I going to do that? Yeah. I'm going to put the hinges in the, the rudder and the, um, and the tail plane. So I'll move the camera around, we'll have a look at this and I'll show you what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. Right, well, for the control surfaces I'm going to be using these uh, robot hinges and um, that's exactly what I'm going to be using. It's their 1 8 hinge with a, a steel pin. And these are really, really good. Very little friction, but very strong. And uh, quite a good section to hold into the wood, which you can hold in with. Well, I'm going to epoxy them anyway. And it also comes, or you can get, a little tool here for finding the center, which is fine providing you've got a square edge. But on the wing, it's hanging up over there where it's tapered, I don't like this because I don't think it centers very well. If we just line that up nice and square, let me check that's in the right place. There we go. And now to just... There we go, and we haven't come out the side and it looks central. So that's good. Now, as far as the 4mm, 
we just want to do that a few uh, a few minutes so I'm going to do that by hand although to be honest it probably wouldn't hurt to put a bit of a depth gauge on this as well which I think I'll probably do for the others but I'll just do this like this for now okay so now we've just counterboard that by four mil and this should there we go and that now fits in there quite nicely and I should it's a good snug fit and it needs to be a snug fit if I drilled all of the hole by four mil then we could end up with the problem let's just take this out you have to be careful pulling them out because you don't want to damage the uh, the actual hinge itself. If I drilled all of this four mil, all of the whole four mil, then you may get a little bit of movement in the hinge like that. And it's really, really important that all three hinges are dead in line to get that smooth action of the control surface. So having the tight three mil at the back, it doesn't give that wobble. So we'll get them dead in line. So I'm going to get on now. And do the rest. I'll do these three and the tail plane and then we'll come back and have a look and see what it looks like. Right, I've now got all three holes drilled in the rudder and the pins in and it's important to make sure that the pins are square so they're not pointing up or down they're actually square to the uh, the rudder and so we get the correct movement and I've done the holes, two holes in the tail plane. I haven't done the fuse large yet. I will mark that up at a later stage once I've got the fuse large finished. And if we push these together, I won't push them fully home because it'll be harder to get them apart. And also I'm not getting, well, I suppose I am getting quite a lot of movement, but I will put an angle on this the back of this rudder but you can see there that's a lovely loose and yet really firm control surface so that I'm really pleased with that producing a really really nice uh, a nice finish so now I just need to, to get that apart very carefully not to damage the hinges there we go right now I've done those I've still got the elevator and tail plane to do but I'm not going to hinge those until I've actually joined these because obviously I don't know what that spacing is so I'm going to do that now I'm just going to have a look this might be the right wire I'm going to have a look and see what wire I've got and then I'm going to bend a piece of metal up that will go into the elevators and then along the back of the tail plane so I'll go and see what I've got now. But I now have this piece of 10 gauge wire bent to the right shape for joining these elevators together. And I've just copied that from the plan. What I have done is I've used the cut off tool on the Dremel to just put a number of grooves in there to try and make that sort of a bit barbed so that when it's glued into place with epoxy, it gets a good strong grip. And this is pretty thick strong music wire so having those cuts in there isn't going to affect it at all. Now I've put that on there with the um, elevators in place and got the correct spacing marked that correctly and I've drilled two holes into the elevators in the right position and I've also done a bit of a groove a slot so that when the music wire goes in it disappears more or less flush not exactly but more or less and the way I did that slot I've got this small round diamond file which I started it off like that and then I just used a really sharp drill and if you pull it back and forth like that it kind of shreds it and makes a nice uh, nice channel very easy done and now these go together it's not quite finished yet you see there so they can work in tandem now if I put these on the bench 
you can see that actually they're raised up a little bit in the middle are they? actually no there that's okay yeah that's okay are they in line? no they're not in line that just wants to twist a little bit so I'll just put a very very slight twist in the wire and uh, yeah that one's a little bit further that way and that's a little bit further that way so I'll put a little bit of a twist in the wire and then that is good to be glued I think if I hold it up like that you can see it's not exactly right but that's really easily adjusted and yet are they straight that way yeah I think I think they I think they're actually I think that's slightly raised in the middle so I'll probably just bend it in a little bit but that's easy done to adjust that now the next job once I've done that is I've got the hinge points marked on the elevators one two three one two three so I will transfer those marks just hold them together like that transfer those marks across and then get these both surfaces hinged. Well I've been working on the wingtips and I thought I ought to do a quick update on where I am because I've gone wrong or made a mistake or it hasn't worked out quite right whatever you want to call it. I did both wingtips so this kind of triangular piece of balsa and I put on the profile of the wing rib which is fine no problem but then for the plan view looking down on top of it I took that from the plans on the wall behind me and so I put that on and I kind of trimmed it to that first mistake and I always say this don't trust the plans and I did so it's, it's my own fault if you look at these pictures you can see that when I actually sanded it and profiled it so to the, the, uh, the shape of the wing and with that 45 degree it didn't work out the, I'd cut too much off the front and essentially that's because this angle here comes in too sharp it's a lot more bulbous or it needs to be for that type of wing tip and so I cut out some of the balsa nice and square and you can see here if I just bring the wing in I just stuck in some balsa I cut out some pieces with the 42 TPI razor saw and now that will profile quite nicely so I'm just going to take a little bit more off that now it's set with the scalpel and then I'll get back outside and I'll give it a good sand and we'll get it to the right shape so <laughs> don't trust the plans right I've now got that wing tip finished and it literally took me about 10 minutes I mean that's the beauty of working with balsa you make a mistake more often than not it's really easy to fix and you can see there it's produced a really nice profile and I really like the way that looks on this wing and if I move it closer in you could probably see the join where I spliced the timber in the end there and I used some really light balsa which was the same density as, as the wing tips made sure the grain was running in the same direction so it all blended in nicely so that's the beauty of balsa isn't it, it it's so easy to, to work with so I've still got the other tip to do which I'm going to do I don't know maybe later or, or tomorrow but I'm going to bring this video to a close now I'm just going to show you what I've been doing I've got the tail plane finished now it's all profiled everything when I say it's profiled so is the wing tips and the wing everything's going to need a final sanding before covering but I've got the basic straight uh, shape there to the structure so I've just got a, a fairly simple full nose on that and I've got the just move move around a little bit I've got the holes in for the, uh, the robot hinges and I've also glued together the two elevators and that's lovely and straight now and I've had that together with the hinges in and uh, it, it's really nice I still need to just bevel the back of the elevators which I'll, I'll do in a bit just so that it doesn't bind when it's uh, when it's moving 
I have done that on the rudder. I've done the, I've profiled both the tailplane and the rudder. So I've put the hinge holes in, and as you can see on that, I've just put a, a little bit of a bevel on that so that it doesn't bind as it's operating. Haven't done that on the back of the tailplane, just on the on the rudder. And I've also put put the ball nose on those as well. I think I'm not sure if I said that. So I'm going to draw this to a close now, and I hope you enjoyed these little bits and pieces, getting all those bits done. So we're almost ready now to start pulling this together for the, for the final, uh, final covering or fitting out anyway. The next job that I'm gonna do in the next video is I'm gonna be going back to the fuselage. And the one final thing I need to do with the fuselage is to work on this nose structure. Get the cover done for the fuel tank, fuel tank, uh, bay and the engine bay needs sorting out how I'm going to do that making sure the engine fits uh, with the silencer and the cut and the carbon and uh, also making sure all the linkages are right so that's going to be the next video and I hope you'll come back and join me in that and see how we get on in this build of a really really nice looking great plane uh, trainer 60 so thanks for watching